dream comes true. You could swim along the river, all the way to the sea. You could fly up in the sky, above the clouds and trees. You could plant a flower garden up on top of the moon. You could swing through the jungle all afternoon. Wherever our story takes us, I can't wait to see. Yes, friends, come and read with me. It's online story time. Hello everybody and welcome to Online Storytime at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy. I'm Teacher Miss E. And we are so delighted that you are here with us today. Hey Teacher Miss E, before we start talking about that prickly pokey thing we're going to talk about, should we sing? Let's sing before we talk about that prickly pokey thing. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Storytime friends, would you sing with us? Get whatever you're going to clap. Remember, hands clap well, but so do eyes. Here we go. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. And I'm so excited to hear stories today. So Teacher Missy, what prickly pokey thing do you want to talk about today? I just get the biggest kick out of these things. Okay. This is an animal. With You're hair right. just like mine. <laughs> Wait, don't you think we kind of look alike? Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a forest animal, and he's got a very unusual bit of pokey hair coming off of his back. Anybody know what that is? You may or may not have ever seen one. Mm -hmm. That is a porcupine. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we maybe pronounced that incorrectly. It is porcupine. You see you in there. Yep, porcupine. Por por oh, yeah. But they are kind of interesting creatures and they, um, they, they get a bad rap, I think. They very much do because people, some people think that a porcupine can shoot its quills. And it can't. It can't. Mm -mm. They don't shoot them, and they, they, they aren't trying to hurt you, but it is their way to defend themselves. That's right. If an animal gets too close, that might be a predator, they are able to release the quills, and then you'll have quills wherever, you know, frequently with dogs. That's um, right. And we've had a couple do that, but... Um, when I was getting ready for this story time, I was reading about the porcupine, and I found it really interesting that there is only one animal that is a true predator for the porcupine. Now, sometimes an owl might get one. Um, sometimes, some, uh, sometimes a fox might get one. But those are very rare because they are so good at defending themselves. Right. But the one animal is called a fisher. Oh. And a, a fisher almost looks like a, almost like a cat. And, about that long and um, they have a way of getting to the porcupine's face right and they keep attacking the face and that's how and they say that the fissure is very important because it keeps the porcupine population under control right but that was really interesting yeah that is interesting and sometimes you can see where porcupines have been in the trees because mm -hmm. they will eat the bark yep and they'll be you know, good sized areas where there's no bark. That's one of their very favorite foods. And sometimes they'll eat roots and, and I'm sure stems and, other things, and right. other things like that, but oftentimes they are eating bark. Um, when I lived in town, we actually had a porcupine visit us in our front yard. Oh. I looked out and there was a porcupine and there was a whole slew of my neighbors following this porcupine, <laughs> wondering where the porcupine was going. <laughs> so we went outside and, you know, as long as you stay a good distance away, you can watch the sky and he climbed up on our front porch and kind of wandered around and oh, then he funny. eventually wandered away. Yeah. They um, move very slowly. Very slowly. And so I, we frequently will see them um, on the highway. You know where they've been hit by a car. I don't think they can get out of the way fast enough. Right. So they, um, it's kind of fun to watch them walk because they just kind of tool along, not in any hurry, not you know. That's right. Um, they. I also read that before 
a predator gets too close to them, they will make kind of a sound, kind of a, a warning sound. And then if the predator obviously keeps going and gets too close, then they'll get a snout full of quills. Um, but other than that warning sound, they don't make a lot of noise. Some squeaks and that sort of thing, but they're mostly quiet. That's, I didn't know that they made that noise before. That's, that's good, at least he's trying to say, or she's trying to say, back off. That's right. So Teacher Missy, do you have any good books about porcupines? Well, you know what, Miss Tracy, I just happen to. Miss Tracy? Yes, Teacher Missy. <laughs> look at this. Oh, look at that cute porcupine. I know, she's adorable. She's got a little ballerina skirt on. And she's playing with something you wouldn't expect a porcupine to play with. A balloon. Balloons. What happens if you put something sharp against a balloon? I think it might pop. I think they pop. Well, let's find out about this porcupine. A balloon for Isabel. That's a pretty name. And the book was written by Deborah Underwood, and the illustrations were done by Laura Rankin. And this book comes to us from, I just said it a minute ago, and I'll find it. Hang on. Be patient with me. Green Willow Books. Hmm, Isabel. Well, let's see about Isabel. Let's just see about her. Oh, well, she's a good, a good drawer. Quite artistic, it looks like. Okay, the sign on the chalkboard says, class graduation. Two days left. No fair, said Isabel. Yeah, no fair, said Walter. It was two days before graduation. In two days, the possums, the raccoons, and all the other animals would get balloons. But not the porcupines. And Isabel wanted a balloon more than anything in the whole world. Mrs. Quill said patiently, I am sorry, but balloons are not safe for porcupines. The porcupines will each get a lovely bookmark. <laughs> but we already have Halloween bookmarks and Valentine bookmarks and, and soon you will have a lovely graduation bookmark, said Mrs. Quill. <laughs> I love that here. Isabel and Walter sat together at lunch. Can I have your broccoli, said Walter? I got jelly beans again. I wish my dad owned a candy shop, said Isabel. <laughs> Isabel gazed out the window. Sally told me that when you first get it, a balloon can bounce on the ceiling. If you pull the string and let it go, it makes a soft, thumpy sound, she said. I heard that after a few days, a balloon floats halfway between the ceiling and the floor, said Walter. It, it just kind of hangs there like, like a ghost. Then it shrivels up so you can put it in your empty olive jar with your other good stuff, said Isabel. A bookmark just sits there, said Walter. We have to get balloons, said Isabel. I will think of a plan. The next day during graduation, during graduation song practice, Isabel raised her paw. May the porcupines have balloons if we promise to be very careful, she said. Porcupines plus balloons equals, what do you think? Happiness, said Isabel. <laughs> Trouble, said Mrs. Quill. If a balloon popped on your quills, it would scare you. Well, I'm not scared of anything. Except the vacuum cleaner, said Isabel. Then it would scare someone else. Walter raised his paw. Well, it would not scare me. A pop balloon could fly through the air and hit someone in the eye, said Mrs. Quill. Oh, well, we could wear goggles, said Isabel. 
Oh, that is enough, said Mrs. Quill. I know you would like balloons. I would like one too, but the graduation bookmarks are very nice this year. Teacher Missy, I love that their teacher's name is Mrs. Quill. I know, isn't that funny? Because that's what the things on the porcupine are called, quills. That's right, quills. I know, they do too, and I love their hair. <laughs> was that your plan, Walter asked Isabel? Oh, it was not, it was not only my plan, Isabel said. The next morning, Isabel wore her pop stopper to breakfast, but she got stuck in the doorway. <laughs> At recess, Isabel and Walter strap pillows on each other, but their quills poke through the pillows to pieces. At lunchtime, Isabel wrapped Walter in packing bubbles, but the other kids tried to pop him. <laughs> I like how they keep trying new things. Though. They, they are trying. They're yeah. really trying to come up with a solution. Only one more day, Walter said sadly, as they picked their graduation caps up. Well, I'll think of something, Isabel said. <clears throat> but inside, she was not so sure. That evening, Isabel went to Walter's for a cookout. You sure have a lot of candy, she said. I know, said Walter. If you ever got a balloon, what color would it be, asked Isabel. Green, said Walter. Like broccoli. I would get red, said Isabel. Like a red, I have an idea. A red what? The next day, the door to Mrs. Quill's classroom flew open. We're pop-proofed, shouted Isabel. Now may we have balloons? <laughs> Mrs. Quill blinked. She stared. She touched one of Isabel's gumdrops with her paw. Well, I don't see why not, she said finally. Hooray, said Isabel. Hooray, said Walter and the other porcupines. Are there any gumdrops left? Whispered Mrs. Quill. No porcupine at graduation was happier than Isabel. Look at all the gumdrops on the porcupines. I love that. I love that. Well, except maybe one. <laughs> that was a great solution, wasn't it? It was, and Mrs. Quill got a balloon too. She did, that's why she was so happy. She secretly wanted a balloon. That, that's how you do it if you're a porcupine. You put gumdrops in your hair. Time friends. Hey, Teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to do a flannel board? Well, you know I love the flannel board. You might not be surprised to know that we have a certain number of porcupines on our board. Should we count them? Oh, Story yeah. time friends. Let's count them up and backwards. Here we go. One, One two, two, three, four, four, five. And now backwards. Five, four, three, Two, two one. one. There we go. And we're going to sing a song called Five Little Porcupines. All right? Now, one thing that we didn't talk about yet about porcupines is when porcupines get scared, they roll up into a little ball. Yes. And then, you know, they just kind of roll like that. And if they're on an incline, they sometimes actually roll too. So that's kind of fun. And you will understand the song better now that you know that little fact. Here we go, it's called Five Little Porcupines. Five little porcupines sitting in a crooked line, eating the most delicious bark. Yum, yum. One heard a scary call, rolled up into a ball. Now there are four little porcupines waiting. That one, he rolled right up into a little ball because he was scared and he rolled away. Let's see, how many do we have left? One, two, two three, four. You're right. Yeah, they're good counters. Aren't they great yeah, counters? Yeah, they are. 
Four little porcupines sitting in a crooked line, eating the most delicious bark. Yum, yum. One heard a scary call, rolled up into a ball. Now there are three little porcupines waiting. Three little porcupines sitting in a crooked line, eating the most delicious bark. Yum, yum. One heard a scary call, rolled up into a ball. Now there are two little porcupines waiting. How many? Twelve? Nine? Seven? Fourteen? A hundred and sixty-nine? Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, two. Two. Okay. Just two. Here we go. Two little porcupines sitting in a crooked line, eating the most delicious bark. Yum, yum. One heard a scary call, rolled up into a ball. Now there is one little porcupine waiting. You think he wants to go wherever the ants went? Let's find out. One little porcupine sitting in a crooked line, eating the most delicious bark. Yum, yum. It heard a scary call, rolled up into a ball. Now there are no little porcupines waiting. No more porcupines, no more crooked lines. They have all left for better spots. Goodbye. Maybe another day they will come back this way. Then we can count the porcupines once more. Hey, thanks for playing. Miss Tracy, check this out. Teacher Missy, is that a porcupine digging a hole? That's a little porcupine digging a hole. Look at him, he's just got little short hair on top of his head, little quills. Mm. Hmm. He is digging a hole. Look at the look on his face. I'm wondering if he's supposed to be digging that hole. <laughs> I don't know. Well, this book is called Norman Didn't Do It. And it was written and illustrated by Ryan Higgins, and he's done lots of books for kids. He has, although what else does it say on the cover, Teacher Missy? It says... Norman didn't do it? Oh, right here it says, yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Norman, Norman, Norman. Well, we're going to find out about Norman. This book comes to us from Disney Hyperion. And we're going to find out. Norman didn't do it. Yes, he did. Norman was a porcupine. Norman's best friend was Mildred. Mildred was a tree. Norman and Mildred did everything together. Strike one, bounce. Chip, 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 there's a bird in that tree. You're right, Mildred, it is a little yellow-bellied sapsucker. I love playing tree together. Yay, you win. <laughs> Norman was happy with the way things were. Okay, one more chapter and then it's lights out, Mildred. Norman and Mildred. Mildred and Norman. Just the two of them. This is a heavy bugger. Until one day, pop! There, there was someone else. And who is that? It was another tree. Right next to Mildred. Mm. Suddenly, it was no longer just Norman and Mildred. Now it was Norman and Mildred and the other tree. This did not sit well with Norman. Norman began to worry. What if the other tree wanted to be friends with Mildred? What if Mildred liked the other tree? What if Mildred liked the other tree more than she liked Norman? 
He's worried. <laughs> the face on this. are so adorable. Okay, hold on now. Norman kept a careful eye on that other tree. He watched as Mildred and the other tree grew closer and closer. Chip, 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 chip. <sighs> Sigh. And closer. You're playing tree without me. Oh, life wasn't the same. Fine. You win. Then it happened. The worst thing possible. Touch. Mildred and the other tree were too close together. It was the last straw. This is the last straw. <laughs> Even though in this case, th there were no straws, J just branches. <laughs> Norman could not bear to lose his friend. Not to the other tree, something just had to be done. And he's thinking, thinking, thinking of all the things he can do. These are his thoughts. He's thinking about shovels and saws and targets and oh my goodness. Norman planned and he planned until his plan was just right. <laughs> then under the cover of night, Norman dug up the other tree and took it far away. Very far away. Norman, Norman, Norman. Very far away. Now he's in a boat trying to get rid of the tree. To a place where other trees would never come near Norman and Mildred ever, ever again. And just like that, the other tree was gone. But he planted it back in the ground. I like that he did that. Norman and Mildred were back together, just the two of them. But it wasn't the same. Other tree? Ooh, what, what, what other tree? Oh, that other tree. <laughs> Wondering where the tree is. I don't know what happened to the other tree. I didn't do anything. Maybe, maybe it went on vacation. Maybe it moved. Oh, how should I know what happened to the tree? There, there, Mildred, you still have me. Soon, Norman started to think about Mildred without her new friend. Norman started to think about the other tree. I don't know, you're all alone out there. Norman started to think about himself and, and what he did. What if someone had seen him? Let's think, there was the moon, there, there were the stars, oh, there was the grass, and, and the trees. Oh no, the trees! What if they saw me? What if one tree tells another tree? Who tells another tree? Who tells another tree? Who tells Mildred? <laughs> what am I going to do? What have I done? Look at his face. I think he's feeling kind of sad about what he did. What if digging up... What if digging up your friend's friend in the middle of the night and taking the friend very, very far away was not the right thing to do? What if it was the wrong thing to do? Oh, stop staring at me, Mildred. <laughs> Trip thud. <laughs> Norman had hit rock bottom. I have hit rock bottom. Oh, well, something, something had to be done. Norman planned, and he planned again. Then he went back to where he had left the other tree. Here he is in his boat, rowing away to try to undo what he had done. 
Yes, you're right, I, I went a little overboard. But in my defense, you were touching branches. Norman knew life was going to be different. Look who's back, Mildred! And that was okay. He might even like it. Norman and Mildred and the other tree. There they are together. Just the three of them. <laughs> Look at, he's got a little. He's got a hammock. He does. He has a little hammock <laughs> between the two trees. That is so cute. And who is that? Norman, no. Oh, Norman, you got troubles, buddy. <laughs> hmm, Norman didn't do it, but we know he did. Hey, story time friends. Hey, teacher Missy. Yes, Miss Tracy. Are you ready for scarf time? Oh, I love scarving. We are going to give Teacher Missy her green scarf because if we don't, she gets very upset. I and, and I understand that because when you want a scarf, you want a scarf, That's right? That's right. So out of your story time kits, my friends, I want you to find your scarf. Or if you don't have your scarf, take off your sock. Or if you're not wearing a scarf or a sock, excuse me, go find some Kleenex, paper towel, anything like that. Well, did you hear something? I actually did. Did you hear something, story time friends? What? Really? Well then of course. Story time friends. Monkey would like to join us today. Hello, Hi. Teacher Missy. Good morning, Monkey. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. I don't have an end to this song, so I'm just going to say good morning to you. You look very chipper today, monkey. Yeah, I'm very chipper, because I say chee, chee, chee all the time. Okay, all right, monkey. You sit right down there, and you can watch us wave our scarves. Okay, story time first. Do you have your scarf? Here we go. Now, because of porcupine, likes to eat we know what he likes to eat what yep bark what else he likes to eat roots and he likes to eat leaves and he likes to eat stems he will eat almost every part of a plant so if you remember a long 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 time ago we did a scarf song called bloom and we're going to do that bloom again because I feel like we want to make some kind of food for the porcupine. So we're going to make him a bloom of a plant. And if you remember how you start with bloom is you take your scarf and you fold it up in your hands. Okay. Do you see how you can't see it anymore? Do you see how you can't see it? That was oh, pretty funny, wasn't that it? That was good, Miss Tracy. Yeah, okay. Okay, you have everything folded up? Here we go, this is called bloom. Here is a green leaf. Can you pop open your thumb? And here is a green leaf. And that, you see, makes two, two little leaves. Here is the bud that makes the flower. Watch it bloom for you. <gasps> awesome. That is so fun. Isn't that great? Let's try it one more time. Can you scrunch up your scarf or your sock? Whatever. Here is a green leaf, and here is a green leaf. And that, you see, makes two. Here is the bud that makes the flower. Watch it bloom for you. Look at that! Here, porcupine, you want a little help? Mm -hmm. Had a little something to eat there. All right. Okay, that was a fun one. Now we're going to do one called I'm a Little Porcupine. And our little porcupine is short and round. Here you go. 
I'm, oh, you know what? Teacher Missy is already glancing over towards the words. <laughs> like, I'm not sure I can, I can read those. So should we give her her own copy? That would be the kind it's thing. It's very to do. helpful, Miss Tracy. Yes. Thank you. Here we go. I'm a little porcupine, short and round. Usually I'm quiet, I don't make a sound. When I get scared, I roll around. Watch me spin across the ground. Could you make your scarf spin all the way across the ground? Just like a scared little porcupine. Now our porcupine is gonna climb some trees. Because porcupine, porcupines, excuse me, feel safer up in the trees. Here we go. I'm a little porcupine, I like the trees. I climb way up high to sway in the breeze. When it's time to climb down, I do it with ease. Waddling away just as fast as I please. Did your porcupine climb up and climb back down? Should we do it all over again? Here we go. I'm a little porcupine, short and round. Usually I'm quiet, I don't make a sound. When I get scared, I roll around. Just watch me spin across the ground. Here we go up in the trees. I'm a little porcupine, I like the trees. I climb way up high to sway in the breeze. When it's time to climb down, I do it with ease, waddling away just as fast as I please. Oh my goodness. Hey, thanks for playing Porcupine Scarf with me. A uh, story time, friends. Teacher Missy, what a great time I had today. I know, this was so fun. It was a lot of fun. We learned a little bit about porcupines. And we got to do a flannel board where the porcupines, remember they got scared and rolled away? But they all had some good times together. And a balloon for Isabel. Wasn't Isabel smart to figure out gumdrops? Just put gumdrops and she all was over your hair. Gum, gummy, gumdrops. So determined. That's right. You know, she just didn't give up. She, That's right. One thing didn't work, she tried another. That's right. And then Norman didn't do it. But he did. Mm, but he did. That's right. But he made rights. He brought the tree back just where it was supposed to be. But I love that book. It makes me kind of giggle. But now, I think it's time to say goodbye. I think it is. Storytime friends, would you sing with us? Please? All right, here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Story time is done today. Now it's time to go and play. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. Do not pet a porcupine. <laughs>